Bronny James is in one of the most uniquely challenging positions in the NBA, but nobody cares. Besides the fact that his name is literally LeBron James, he's a second round pick with the spotlight of a first round pick, and for good reason. Yes, he's related to LeBron James, but it's the way he entered the league that caught everyone's eye. LeBron may not have purposely built up the pressure, but he created the spotlight for him by doing two things. He had vocalized that one of his goals in the NBA was to play with Bronny. Then just last year, he made a bold claim that Bronny was better than some NBA players before he had even entered college. But after a scary freshman season where he went through a cardiac arrest and didn't play much, Rich Paul pulled the final string, threatening each team to not draft Bronny or else he would be going to Australia. By pulling these strings, LeBron and Bronny have a chance to make NBA history, being the first father-son duo to play in the NBA. But at what cost? Nepotism can only take someone so far. The reality is that Bronny never got the experience that most NBA prospects would, and more importantly, never had the resume to prove that he's truly an NBA player. But this all wouldn't matter if for one thing. Does Bronny have the skills to be an actual NBA player? And if not, what would it take for him to become one? Summer League is an interesting time because it's a very small sample size, but we get a sense of what these rookies are about. Now, people don't seem to understand the purpose of Summer League. With such a limited sample size and a game that doesn't look too realistic to what the NBA is going to look like, we're a little too focused on the stats and not just the process. So going into this video, what I really wanted to see were the skills that Bronny can and can't apply to the NBA. Now let's get one thing right. Even though nepotism carried Bronny to the league, the player he wants to be, which is a good guard defender, is something that the Lakers actually do need. They don't have any good guard defenders right now, and they didn't really add anyone in the offseason to help out. So even if Bronny's offense looked bad on paper, which it did at times, to me, that's not the biggest concern. The biggest question instead is whether he can defend on and off the ball. To me, Bronny's lack of experience really shows when he's defending off the ball. Just like a lot of younger players, Bronny tends to relax when the ball's not in his matchup's hands. He tends to ball watch and then lose sight of his matchup. So here Bronny's guarding the corner and he's looking at the ball. So his man cuts and Bronny's late. Then he gets hit with an elevator screen, so he's late on the contest. Here's another one where Bronny's again watching the ball, but does a good job fighting the screen and recovering to his man. After Bates gives the ball up, Bronny then relaxes and then realizes that a dribble handoff is coming. He's late, gets screened, and Bates gets a layup. These are just a few that his opponents were able to actually finish. There were plenty of examples where he gets backdoored, but he was really fortunate that he's playing G League talent, so they couldn't really expose him. One of the first things any NBA team is probably going to have on the scouting report for him is that they're going to make Bronny move off the ball, whether it's a backdoor cut or even on an offensive rebound. And while this could be totally fixed, it's the lack of attention to detail that's the problem. Because in today's game, one of the cardinal sins of team defense is relaxing once the ball is not in your man's hands. As JJ Redick alluded to in the ESPN broadcast, Bronny needs to be a ball hawk, but that has certainly not been the case so far. He's reacting to a lot of actions instead of proactively thinking about the next action. And I know having great reactions is a big part of defense, but you can't let your matchup get to whatever spot he wants. Just like with dribble handoffs, Bronny's also had a hard time navigating screens in the pick and roll. Now this part is harder to judge because we don't really know what the Lakers game plan was or even if they had one. But again, he's waiting for his matchup to use a screen and then trying to trail, which has not been good. A lot of the best defenders will get creative in navigating the screen. They might even start where Bronny is, but they will beat the offensive player to the screen so they can't use it. Bronny has tried doing that at times, but he's cheating a little bit too much. So he's given away what he's doing, and then his magic can reject the screen and go the other way to create triple penetration. On the Lakers, I fully anticipate that they're going to play a drop coverage with Anthony Davis. Because he's an undersized guard, He's going to have to understand how to disrupt the pick and roll and figure out angles when navigating those screens. And with better defensive instincts, I think that would help accelerate the learning curve of ball screen defense. Now offensively is where things are a little trickier. A lot of people clown on him for having some really bad scoring games. And for a player of his nature, we expected that his offense would come along a little bit later. But there's a problem. 
Bronny's not the greatest dribbler by any means, so he doesn't have any great go-to moves. And at times, he did look uncomfortable with the ball in his hands. In the league, he's likely going to be standing in the corner instead of being a main ball handler, but what the Lakers need from him is to shoot the ball at a respectable rate. Just by looking at the stats, he was 3 for 18 from 3. But if you notice, two of those threes were off the dribble threes. They were not catch and shoot. It's a small sample size, but one thing that was interesting is that Bronny was much more comfortable shooting the ball when he got to dribble it. A lot of his mid-range shots were off the dribble, and he tends to take a few dribbles to pull up or go to a two dribble step back jumper. It allows him to get into a rhythm and shoot more smoothly compared to his catch shoot ability where he's a little more stiff. A lot of his scoring came from dribble handoffs as well because he's not a really good dribbler. And while that can work in Summer League and the G League, I cannot imagine him getting any dribble handoffs because the Lakers have D'Lo, LeBron, and Austin Reeves to do that. Ultimately though, it really comes down to how Bronny responds when the defense is focused on the Lakers ball handler and then he gets the ball. And the problem is, Bronny has historically never been a good catch and shoot shooter. He only shot 19% in his 25 games at USC, and in high school, he only shot 33% at Sierra Canyon. So he's going to have to be at least respectable enough if he's going to have a chance of staying in the league. The part that I find more promising for him is his driving ability. He's shown some flashes as a driver, especially his ability to finish in traffic. The best thing is that he finished with his offhand over a taller defender at times. And as of now, it's clear to me that he's more comfortable creating offense when he's able to dribble. And without a strong handle, he can get away with that against the G League, especially because defenders are going to give him the space to drive. But in the league, Bronny's handle will be exposed unless he keeps improving it. So he has to at least learn how to play without the ball. Overall, Bronny is going to need more experience, and the Lakers are banking on the fact that spending time in the G League will get him the best experience possible. But here's the problem. Given the fact that bronny has been rushed into the NBA, I'm nervous that Bronny's being set up to fail. Bronny has a target on his back that he's never asked for, and the expectations for him to stay in the league is going to be very highly scrutinized compared to most second-round picks. But in reality, at his position, he only needs one or two great skills to really stay in the league. And the Lakers are confident that their development program is going to get them there. In the past, they've had G League guys like Alex Caruso, Max Christie, and THT make it. So the Lakers have had some success, but this is a different challenge. Making history, especially with stakes as low as the 55th pick, seems like an absolute no-brainer. But it makes the life of Bronny James more difficult to get ready fast enough to not just make the NBA, but to get what he truly wants, creating his own narrative and being his own guy. And that would be the ultimate accomplishment for someone that's in the most uniquely challenging position that the NBA has ever seen.